Court of Appeal in Abuja has discharged and acquitted a former Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Samuel Nkanu Onogen, from his conviction of false asset declaration charges by the Code of Conduct Tribunal. Former President Muhammad Buhari had in 2019 removed Onogen as the Chief Justice of Nigeria during the pendency of a charge against him at the Code of Conduct Tribunal. The conviction of Onogen on April 18, 2019 and forfeiture of his bank accounts by the Umar Yakubu Danledile Tribunal was struck down by the Appellate Court following the resolution of the issues that led to the trial and conviction. Well, for this conversation, we now have joining us from our Abuja studio, a lawyer and public affairs analyst, Kenneth Okonkwo. He will also be interrogating President Tinumbu's political appointments in all sectors and the quality and quantity of representation of each zone. He will also look into the president's latest directive to release minors and the president's pushback on efforts to stall tax reforms. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me and thank you everybody that is watching from any part of the world. So let's start, you know, with the ex-CJN's um, acquittal. What are your thoughts on the ruling acquitting him of false assets declaration charge? Well, it was a very straightforward decision from the Court of Appeal being a settlement judgment, meaning the parties actually settled out of court and came to the court for the courts to announce the terms of their settlement. I recall when the CJN was to be appointed, I was one of those people that came out on TV and marshaled the points while he was substantially qualified to be CJN. But the CJN did not understand when that when you climb to that height, a lot of politics go behind the schedule. When the political hawks came against him, I was one of the people that said you should resign at that point so that you do not go into history as the first CJN that was stood on the dock and tried for criminal offense. But he delayed, and unfortunately, they still disgraced him, and eventually he resigned. So it is good for us, whenever you are losing relevance and you know you don't have the political clout to sustain yourself, to resign, it doesn't make you that you have admitted the guilt but it makes you to reduce the amount of shame for which your traducers have subjected you to. Eventually, he resigned. So what he just went to do was to go to court to put the record straight that he ought not to have been arraigned after he had resigned. And of course, the court agreed with him that the court lacked jurisdiction to try him when he has resigned from being the chief justice of Nigeria. So it was more like a settlement out of court than for the court to pronounce the terms of settlement. Now, the Nigerian Bar Association at the time described his suspension as a coup against the judiciary. So what measures you know, can be taken to protect the independence of the judiciary and to ensure that such does not happen again? The judiciary should learn to live above board the standard of judgment for the judiciary is higher than that of the ordinary person. Because being a judge, you are likened to be a person appointed by God Almighty to superintend the justice of your fellow men. So you have to first and, first, first and foremost live above board. And when you live above board, you have to celebrate your independence, not just in theory, but also in practice. We are the judges. Uh, carouseling and cavorting with the political elements. They make themselves very susceptible to attacks by these elements when they fall out of line or out of favor from them. Because the politicians use that opportunity of your interaction with them to compromise you or complicate your life, that you would not have any other choice than to obey whatever they say. Because as they are compromising you, they are keeping those records. And when you want to refuse to do what they tell you to do. They will bring those records just to implicate and embarrass you. So the judges should learn to know that the job they are doing is more like a divine job. And don't ever try to communicate illicitly with these politicians. Then secondly, they, we should learn to 
observe the separation of powers. We have three arms of government. They are independent and they are separate. The executive should learn to respect the judiciary and so also the legislature. And like I said, the judiciary has what it takes to cut off these people from interfering in their activity. But it is only when they learn not to be corrupt, only when, to, when they learn how to give justice, not judgment, and how to separate themselves from the unclean things that the politicians mix themselves with. But looking at the Nigerian system the way it is at the moment, how easy really would it be to separate themselves from fraternizing with the political class? At the moment, there seem to be, you know, th th some sort of an alliance that we cannot really explain it, you know, but it's there. So how easy will it be to cut it off? Very easy. As long as you want to be committed to excellence, as long as in the judiciary, the, you, the NJC, should learn to recommend people for appointment based on competence, not based on connection. As long as you are not corrupt yourself, it is very easy. The executive cannot influence the judiciary when they don't want to be influenced. But when you want to appoint somebody who is not qualified, then you need extra, you know, extra methods, extra methods to get the executive to appoint the person and get the legislature to approve the person. If you want to appoint your son who is not qualified, for instance, to be a judge, you would have to dance also to give in something to the executive to agree to appoint your incompetent child. Then when you are corrupt, that means you are inducible with money. Then what do you think it's easy for the executive to buy you? But when you make up your mind that you will have the spirit of excellence, you will not be corrupt and you will appoint only competent persons from wherever they come from. You can stand your ground and you can withstand any pressure and things will move by its own natural flow and nobody will ever move you. He said, because God is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. But God cannot be on your right side if you are an unholy vessel. So let us exude, you know, let us you know, exclude incompetence and corruption from our system and every other thing will be added onto us. It's very easy. Okay, well, I hope it can be done, you know, just as you have said. Now, I would like us to, you know, to move to another issue, that of the president's latest directive, you know, releasing the minors who were accused of treason following their participation at the end bad governance protest. The president, you know, also ordered a probe, a probe into all those involved in the arrest of these minors. What are your thoughts, you know, on this occurrence? It is very unfortunate that this government continually brings shame and bad name internationally and nationally on Nigeria. The question is, what have they achieved by arresting and detaining unlawfully and illegally and shamelessly children on the pretense that they committed treasonable felony? What is treasonable felony? I'm going to explain it in a very, very, very ordinary language. It's like people mounting armored cars going on AK-47 and overthrowing Tinubu from the villa. Look at those children. How many of them have even seen armored cars? How many of them can operate AK-47 to overthrow a government? And what were they doing when they were arrested? They were simply crying in the street. We are hungry. We are undergoing hardship. Ameliorate our situation. And you as a government, because you say they were carrying flags, and then they have now committed treason. Meanwhile, section 39, section 40, section 41 of the Constitution made it clear that these children are entitled to freedom of expression, freedom of movement, freedom of association, freedom of assembly. And when they are doing that, expressing themselves that they are hungry, you went and caught them. You say they were carrying flags. May I ask, does President Tinubu not fly the flags of other countries when he is accepting ambassadors into Nigeria? Do they not fly the flags of other countries when they are dealing with other countries? What is the offense about flying foreign flags in Nigeria? When I was in the university, 
I recall when America bombed Libya, we were flying Libyan flags in Nigeria. Section 36, subsection 12 of the Nigerian Constitution is very clear. You cannot charge anybody of any crime except it is prescribed in a written law. So what is the crime of carrying flag, foreign flag? You say they are crying that uh, they should have uh, military intervention. Let me make it clear. If I say I prefer military rule to civilian rule, it's not an offense. You must prove that I have attempted to overthrow the government or I'm conspiring with people to overthrow the government forcefully before you can begin to think about reasonable felony. It is a shame that these children have been degraded, dehumanized unnecessarily. Let me tell you, Section 34 is very clear. Every individual is entitled to respect for the dignity of his person and accordingly shall not be subjected to torture, inhuman or degrading treatment. These children have been subjected to torture, inhuman and degrading treatment. And you can imagine this government saying that they we are faking their fainting in court. May I ask, all those ribs that we are exposed, that showed signs of malnourishment, we are these children also faking it? The only fake thing I have seen in this Nigeria presently is this government lying at every opportunity, even lying against children. Children that you know are almost dying. You could see it. And you say they are faking, they are fainting. They were running after granuts. They were running, they were, they were already hungry. And now you put them to die. This government is inhuman. I have not seen such a, an issue before. So it's not about Tinubu releasing them. It is about, we are then meant to be arrested in the first place. And so you're talking you about know, treasonable you know, felony. You know, let me know, no. you, know you, there, you know, about whether they were supposed to be arrested in the first place. According to the false PRO, that's Muiwa yes. Dejobi, he says only those below the age of seven are not liable under the law. So according to him, you, you know, the police did not err in arresting and prosecuting those minors. What are your thoughts on this? All right, let me educate him a little bit on the point of law. May I respectfully admit that in Nigeria, it is only when you are below seven that you are not criminally responsible. But let me remind him that the law is that when you want to bring children to court, you bring them to a juvenile court. When you want to bring them to court, or any human being for that matter, you charge him for an offense that he committed. You can only say this student committed, maybe assuming without considering they even committed any crime. You'll be talking about billable offenses. You'll be talking about maybe a breach of public peace. You'll be talking about maybe AFRI, maybe theft, or anything. Not treasonable felony. And let me remind him that you do not even lock up children where you lock up adults. As far back as when we were in the colonial regime, they made it that somebody between the age of 16 and even 21 will be taken to a bostal institution, a reformatory, regarded as even not mature enough to be taken to prison. And then you are bringing them to court. Let me remind him that two months is the only time that even a court can bring somebody to court study. That is, if you had taken the person to court within 48 hours, then after two months, if you have not tried him to court, you must release him unconditionally or upon such terms as to let him go, but to come for his trial. These children had been in detention for three months. Where did he get that power? The court even said the law is that even when somebody's offense attracts certain punishment, if he had stayed in detention for the time of that punishment, you let him go. And yet you brought these children to court that you want to try them. Let me ask him, when they were in custody, were they well fed? Were they not being tortured? Were they not giving inhuman and degrading treatment against the Constitution of Nigeria, Section 34, Section 35, Section 36? They breached all these laws. And he is saying that I'm even ashamed that he will come out and begin to defend the indefensible. Those children, the President has, has to apologize to them and compensate them adequately. It was very wrong. The charges were wrong. The process of detaining them wrong. The process of arraigning them wrong. They were just malnourished, maltreated, and mistreated in that whole process. 
and the police should be apologizing to them and not inflicting more psychological torture on them after the ordeal they have gone through. It's really very shameful. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Kenneth Okunkwo, lawyer and public affairs analyst. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.